Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this video I'll be showing you how you can use the new Colorize Photo Tool in Photoshop Elements 2020 to go from a black and white picture like this over to a colored picture like that. I'll then show you how you can take this over into the expert mode and go even further and adjust specific color areas. There we go, like his jacket over here and this man's shirt on the right hand side. There's before and there's after. You can also use that particular technique to colorize photos even if you don't have Photoshop Elements 2020. Don't forget to take a moment and hit that like button and the share button as well. Also don't forget to subscribe. I do several videos every single week mostly on Photoshop Elements and Photoshop and you can learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements and even the new brand new Photoshop Elements 2020 with my training courses and there's links for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Here's the basic black and white image and we'll be using the new Photoshop Elements 2020 colorized photo picture to add color into this. And I'll show you a few tricks to get the best results from that tool. So we'll start off by going up here to the Enhance menu. That's where you're going to find this. And right down here, Colorize Photo, right there. Let's click on that. It then opens up the Colorize Photo workspace. Now, if your image is not in RGB format, it will ask you to convert that. Just choose OK. It will then analyze the image, find the different parts of the picture, and then colorize those, plus give you four different choices over here on the right-hand side. There's a kind of a muted color. There's a more vibrant color right down here, which I usually like better and then a couple of coolers. So I have two warm choices and two cool choices. There that one is. It takes a minute for it to refigure everything. Now if I choose OK right down here, let me just do that for you real fast. Choose OK. It brings the colorized version in as a brand new layer over here with no options for adjustments. So you have to do all of your main adjustments before you get to this point. So just delete that and I'll get back to that tool again. Again that's Enhance. Colorize Photo, let it figure it out. We'll let it think about this for a minute and we'll then choose that second option. Again, I normally like that more saturated version in most cases. There we go. Let's go to the saturated version right down here. Give it a moment to refigure on that one and bring our colors back in again. There it is. Okay, now if we analyze this, we'll see a few glaring problems. One is his ear right over here. Other part is this face here. It's kind of a different color from this part of the face. This hand really isn't colored. And this part of this jacket and down here, that's not colored either. And over here, this ear isn't colored and part of his hand isn't colored. There's a lot of little problems in here. I'll take care of the major ones and show you the process. I won't bother doing everything in this photo. It'll just take too much time. But I'll show you the process on how to improve the basic colorization. What you need to do is go up here where it says auto and manual. Click on the manual side and that brings you into the manual mode. Now you need to select the part that you want to change. So you have two options here, the quick selection tool or the magic wand. I usually prefer the quick selection tool in most cases. You make a new selection, add to your selection or subtract from your selection and you can change your brush size right there. That looks like that's okay. So let's just do his ear over here. I'll come in and I'll brush into the ear just like that. And let's add to. And I'll see if I can grab the tip of that nose while I'm at it. And that little bit of the side of his face right there. Okay, that's what we need to adjust in here. Once you have your selection made, come down to the droplet tool. All this does is it tells Photoshop Elements that you want to make this selection into a new color zone. So all it does it just kind of selects that. Now down below here you can choose all kinds of colors. I will normally ignore all of this and go right for that eyedropper tool right there. Click on that and then make a selection someplace in the mid to light areas of the color that you want to match. So I'll choose right there. It's kind of just to the right and below that light spot. Give it a second to think about it. There it goes. It did its thinking. Now if you're happy with that, you're fine. If you're not happy, just choose a little different spot. Click again and let it rethink. You'll see it change. There it is. A little rethought. And I think that's looking pretty good. Now to see it without these little lines around it, just go back to the auto mode and see how it looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think we've fixed that area. 
Let's now take care of the jacket down here. That's this part and this bit right down there. Back to the manual mode. Back to our selection brush. Choose new because we're making a new selection at this point. And let's come in and try to grab this jacket. There's our selection. I need to get rid of that bit here. So let's go up to subtract and I'll subtract that bit of the shirt right there. Okay, so just these two parts of the jacket. That's good. Back to the droplet tool. Click inside there. There's your new droplet. Grab the eyedropper tool. And then again, someplace in the mid to light range on the color that you want to copy. Let it think about it for a minute and that looks pretty good. And then back to auto and see how we look. Okay, last thing I think I'll change in this video is this hand over here so it matches that hand more closely. Back to manual mode, back to the quick selection tool. Make sure we're on new. There you go. And let's come in and make a selection right in there. That looks fine. We can maybe try to add a bit more of the fingers down there. There we go. That looks good. Okay, back to droplet tool. Click inside of that selection. Back to the eyedropper tool. And let's choose something from this hand up here, kind of in the mid to light range. Let it think about it. There we go. And that looks like that's a pretty good match. Back to auto mode. And there we go. Okay, the hands are fixed. We took care of several problems in here. And this is a pretty good looking image at this point. Could be better. I could, you know, equalize out the colors in his face up here. I could get this ear over here and down around here on the hand. But all in all, it's a pretty good image at this point. In most cases, this would be usable. Let's say, though, you wanted to make the blue in the jacket bluer and you wanted to make this shirt in here better. I can try doing that over here, but I'd like to have more control over that. We can do that over in the expert mode. So you get to this point when you're happy with this, it's as good as you can get it. Just click on OK. It takes us over into expert mode as a new layer. So you have two layers, your black and white layer and your new colorized layer. Let's now take a look at this jacket and do a better job on the jacket, the blue parts of the jacket. What we'll do is we'll go over and grab a selection tool. Click on new selection. I'll be using the quick selection tool just like we just did over in the colorized photo tool. And I'll just select in here and try to get just this part of the jacket that I want to have blue. So let's pull around. Now if it gets too much, we'll take that out in just a bit. Let's just get everything included first and then we'll take out what shouldn't be in there. That's pretty good and a little bit right up in there. Now go over here to subtract and let's subtract out the stuff we don't want. Which is that bit. And down here the grass area right in there okay there's just that jacket left so I have a selection now with just that jacket just the blue part of the jacket so we're on our color layer make a new layer above that there's your new layer and then click this button right here this is the add layer mask what that gives you is a layer mask that just shows just the parts in that selection now, double click on the transparent side, the left hand side, grab the eyedropper tool over here, and then find something kind of in the range you want to push your colors towards. It's not going to be the actual color you want, it's just going to be close. Something over in here somewhere maybe. You can click around a little bit. I'm watching my colors over there. I want to find something that has a fair amount of color in it. I guess that's kind of okay right there. It's really gray. We'll fix that right now. Now we have a basic color selection from our color area. Click on that color picker. It brings it up here. We can now take this as our starting point. If I go up, it gets lighter. If I go to the right, it gets more saturated. So I'll go to the right a bit. I want more saturation in there and I want it a little bit lighter. So let's say up in here someplace. There's a real lot of blue right there. Too much is better than too little. So a little more is better than a little less in this particular case. Choose OK. That gives us a nice blue color in here. Again, this is based on but exaggerated from the existing colors. Now take your paint bucket tool. Just click any place in the page. Doesn't matter where you click. And what that does is it fills that whole left hand side with that color. And then that's limited by the layer mask on the right hand side. We now need to blend this into the picture again, not a solid color, but blend it in the existing colors. 
And that's with your blend modes right up here. Come down to the soft light and that should do a pretty good job for it. And there we go. There's our nice blue exaggerated from the existing. So here it is without and there's with our new additional blue color. Now if that's too much, all you have to do is back down on the opacity. Just pull this down a little ways and that kind of blends it in with the existing colors. And I think right about there looks very natural. So there we go, about halfway, about 50%. So there's before, that was their selection. There's my selection, just a little bit more color in that area. Let's do the exact same thing over here on this shirt. So you can see this whole process one more time. Come down to the background, copy layer right there, your color layer. Back to our selection tool. Again, we're using the quick selection. Set this at new selection. You can kind of see the brush size, or you can change your brush size right down here. I think a smaller brush is better than a larger brush for the quick selection tool. And let's just start coming in here and pulling a selection for the shirt. Now, once you've pulled in one selection, you want to add more to it. Make sure you're on here where it says add. It should say new there and then add here. If it says new and it's over here, make sure you click on here again so it says add. And we'll then add in our next bit right there. Now this brought in too much of the jacket over here. So let's go to the next option, which is subtract, and just take out just that little bit right there. So we now have a selection of just this part of the shirt. That's all looking good. Same exact trick. Just make a new layer. Click on the Add Layer Mask button, and it gives you a new layer with just that part shown, just that shirt shown. Go back to the eyedropper tool, click in here someplace. This gives you a base color. Oh, I've got to come down to my layer first. There we go, color layer. Click in here and choose a base color. Now I have my eyedropper tool here set at a three by three average. It just makes it a little bit more even when you do that. So a three by three average is pretty good on this. And then there's our base color. Click on your color picker and again, to the right gives you more color saturation. To the top makes it lighter. I think lighter is better than darker on this particular technique. So that's just a bit more color in there. That's okay. And if it's not quite what you want, this is a bit too orangey for me. I'm just going to move the slider control a little bit up until it begins going into the greens a little ways. There we are. Maybe a little less green. Okay, that's closer to what I want. Choose OK and then double click on the transparent side here, the left side of our new layer mask layer. Grab your paint bucket, click any place in the picture. It fills that whole layer with that color. Go up to the blend modes and soft light that overlays it and there we go. So here it is without and there it is with our new color change. Now once again if it's too much all you have to do is just back off the opacity a little bit and it blends that in a bit better. I think right around in here is pretty good, 75 on this one. There's before and there's after. Just kind of brightens up those colors in there. Okay, there's your technique. Now I mentioned earlier that you can also use this exact same technique if you want to do a colorized photo if you don't happen to have that new tool right there, the colorized photo. If you're working with an earlier version of Photoshop Elements 2019 or earlier, there it is, same thing without that color layer. We're just looking at the black and white layer. There's the color for the shirt. There's the color for the jacket. You'll have to go brighter on these things, you know, more saturation for this to work out well. But as you can see, the exact same trick allows you to colorize a black and white photo very easily. Just use your quick selection tool, select the areas you want to have changed or colorized, and then do the exact same trick. So there it is. That's how you can first, of course, use the colorized photo tool here inside of Photoshop Elements 2020, and then how you can take that a lot further by adding a more color control to specific areas using layers and layer masks inside of the expert mode. Now, if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, not just these little quick videos here on YouTube, take a look at my complete training courses, and there are links right down there in the description. I go through the whole program not just the few tools you'll see here on YouTube. So it really is the best way to learn how to use Photoshop Elements. And don't forget to hit that like button and of course hit share as well. And also don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos in the future.